Alright, gonna do a video refuting Ed Fenninger's hyper-dispensationalist weird heresy that I used to kind of subscribe to myself, actually, before I got saved. Uh, what he teaches, basically, is hyper-dispensational. Whether he, whether he admits it or not, it is hyper-dispensationalism. Because what hyper-dispensationalism is, is you basically take a dispensation and, and you basically make dispensations within that dispensation, essentially. And, he, and basically, what he says is that Paul was actually preaching a different gospel in Romans chapter 10. And that they're actually, and, and what hyper dispensationalism is, is that they say there are actually different gospels within the Pauline epistles. So just chopping up the Bible, the little itty bitty text, you know. So according, so according to Fenninger, essentially, Romans chapter nine, one to verse to chapter nine, are written to Christians. But then he stops at Romans ten and says, "Oh, that's not written to us." But then back in Rome, then back in Romans eleven, he goes back to writing to Christians again. Paul does. I mean, completely illogical. It's weird, but. This is hyper dispensationalism, taking like basically making dispensations within dispensations and just chopping up the Bible and making a complete mess of it. Uh, and I'm going to show you proof that the, that Romans 10 is indeed preaching the gospel that we preach in the dispensation of grace or the church age or other, I like calling it the time of the Gentiles. I think that's a proper term because the time of the, because dispens the church age is kind of not really a proper term because. Uh, there are Jews that are part of the church too, and, and dispensation of grace is kind of problematic too because God's grace is in, is in every dispensation. So it can't, you can't really call it dispensation of grace, but you can call it the time of the Gentiles because in this dispensation, God is specifically focusing on the Gentiles. So uh, that's why I prefer calling it the time of the Gentiles, but church age is a more widely recognized term. But again, I'm getting off topic. Let's get right into this. Back, dealing with my comment dealing with Romans 10, 13, saying it was a cancer to the gospel. <clears throat> and this video was we put up by this individual. Authorized King James Version, 1611. Uh, this is the same guy, I believe, rejects the Trinity. So, well, it's kind of funny because the word Trinity is not anywhere in Scripture. The word Trinity, I mean, the, the Trinity doctrine is completely foreign to Scripture. And he's probably going to say, oh, you got that from Brian Dillinger. Uh, no, just do a search of the word Trinity in the Bible, the word Trinity does not appear anywhere in the Bible. The proper term is Godhead. So, even if you believe in the uh, Trinity of three persons, you know, and again, God throughout the Bible is always referred to as being a person singular. Now, there is still three in one. I'm not, not denying that. But, uh, calling it three persons and calling it the Trinity, these terms are not found in Scripture. But, anyway, just had to point that out, because the Trinity, he, he, he makes a big deal about the Trinity in a lot of his videos. So he's mirroring in this video. Now, the fact is, is people think Romans 10, 13 is part of the gospel. It's not part of the gospel. So you heard it out of his mouth, it's not part of the gospel. Really? Okay, who is the book of Romans written to? Uh, and it's kind of funny, because in Romans 10, Paul doesn't even say in Romans 10, I'm writing to different people. Like, he, he doesn't say that he's writing to Jews or people in the time of Jacob's trouble. He just says, he, just pre he pretty much preaches the same gospel that is throughout the Pauline epistles. And I'm going to show you the proof on that. Romans chapter... Uh, 1 verse 7, uh, you know, talking about Paul's greetings. Romans chapter 1 verse 7, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, uh, grace uh, to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Romans is to the Gentiles, to the church in Rome. Not the Roman Catholic Church, because uh, the Roman Catholic Church was started by Satan uh, hundreds of years after Paul even walked the earth. So, when it says church in Rome, it's not talking about the satanic, pedophilic uh, cultic Roman Catholic Church is talking about the Church of Jesus Christ, not the Latter Day, not, not Latter Day Saints, but the the biblical Church of Jesus Christ. But uh, Romans chapter ten, who is Romans ten written to? Well, obviously it's written to Gentiles. So Romans ten verse one, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is they might be saved. So he's praying for Israel. But look at this. So Fenninger claims that Romans ten is preaching a false gospel. Okay, Romans ten four. Let's see if this is the same gospel that he preaches. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So Romans ten thirteen is preaching a false. Or Romans ten is preaching a false gospel uh, to everyone that believeth. Christ is the end of the law, so that's a false gospel apparently. So according to Fenninger, this is a false gospel apparently. Uh, what Paul is saying here, verse five. For, and sorry, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit sick right now, so mind my sniffling. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. And, and that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. So the righteousness which is of the law. So uh, you had to live by the law in the Old Testament to be saved. Huh. 
kind of refutes Fettinger's whole uh, dispensation. Uh, salvation has been the same in every dispensation. The righteous, which is of the law, you know, shall live by them. Hmm, interesting. Uh, verse, verse 6. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? The righteousness, which is of faith. Uh, how does that any different than what is preached in Galatians, which preached in Ephesians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 3, you know, uh, you know, all over the Pauline epistles, righteousness of faith. I mean, it lines up perfectly with Ephesians 2, which Fenninger would say is written to us, with Ephesians 3, Ephesians 1, Galatians 2, Galatians 3, all over the Pauline epistles. But apparently this is preaching a false gospel, apparently. So, basically, Paul is contradicting himself, apparently. Uh, so, it's it just, just nutty heresy, but let's continue. Prayer is not part of the gospel. Would you say uh, Acts 2.38 is part of the gospel? In the book of Acts, they were preaching primarily to Jews. They weren't even, they, they, like Christians weren't even in the book of Acts. The whole book of Acts, chapter, or I mean, actually Christians are in the book of Acts. They appear in the book of Acts, but they don't, I meant to say they don't appear in Acts chapter 2. Because in the entirety of Acts chapter 2, they're preaching to Jews, not Christians. But people who are using 2.38, being baptized, for the gospel, Acts two thirty eight becomes a cancer to the gospel because it's not the gospel. No, I agree with him there because baptism has no part in um, salvation. Ba baptism comes after salvation. You have to believe before you get baptized. So I, he's right there. But what he's doing is that he's he's taking that truth that Acts two is not written to us, and basically he's saying that see that means that Romans ten is also not written to us. So he's taking the truth and, and stretching it. It's a typical of heretics. They'll take the truth. And then they'll add to the truth and like stretch it and you know, typical. These guys are gonna get all sanctimonious here. To make any more videos about Ed Finninger. But he made a comment. I do apologize for my sniffling. I'm, I'm really, I'm, well, I am a little bit sick, but I'm just, I'm sick, you know. So I, I do, I, I'll try to cover my nose when I sniffle, but you know, I do apologize. Sorry about that, but let's continue. On one of his videos the other day that troubles me so much, it just makes me want to cry. And it makes me want to cry because it's just so utterly wicked that yet people can't see it. And people's minds are so twisted and so perverted. And this man just keeps on teaching. People just keep heaping praise upon him. In fact, the comment... Now he prayed upon me. Heaping praise upon the word of God. The, glor the glorifying God for seeing the truth. Send them to me. Are four thumbs up so far. I have a screenshot of it. I saved it. But... You have to save the screenshot. My video's all up. I haven't pulled any of them down. I'm not hiding anything. These guys are always pulling their videos down, changing their channel names, doing all kinds of stuff. He said Romans 10.13 is a cancer to the gospel. Oh, yeah, and it is. <laughs> so, basically, according to Fenninger, and I'll, you know, I'm repeating myself, but according to Fenninger, Paul was speaking to Gentiles in Romans chapter 1, verse two, uh, chapter 1 to chapter 9, but then in Romans 10, he stops speaking to the Gentiles. But then in Romans 11, he goes back to speaking to the Gentiles. Huh? Nutty nonsense. Again, how in Romans 10, you know, righteousness with everyone that believeth, you know, righteousness which is of faith. How is that any different to what, what, is, what, what Paul said in, in Galatians 3 or Ephesians 2? It's not. So, call Romans 10 a, a false gospel. Weird. It's really, really weird. And basically, what he's essentially saying is that Paul contradicted himself, essentially. It's not part of the gospel. It's not part of the gospel. People are using it incorrectly. Just like people use Acts 2.38. Folks, I don't know about you, but I've had people in my life that have had cancer. Some have succumbed to it. Others didn't. But cancer is not a good thing. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we got, that's why I used the word. 
you, I, mean, you know, I mean, honestly, calling it a cancer, I mean, that's just ridiculous. And again, you know, if you're watching this, um, Paul is preaching exactly what he preached in Ephesians 2 and in Galatians 3. How is that any different? The only difference is he just he just mentions right here, you have to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. If, if, you know, and, and if he's speaking to another, if he's not, if he's um, talking about a different dispensation, okay, so like, like, you know, if he's talking about a different dispensation, why is he talking about, for there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek? He's speaking to the Gentiles. Clearly speaking to the Gentiles. So, don't be deceived by this uh, Romans, anti-Romans 10, 13, oh, it's a false gospel, just hyper-dispensationalism, nutty nonsense. God bless you, goodbye.